Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of ABUSD Storytime Science. I'm Mrs. Gillette. Today's story is Ninja Red Riding Hood, written by Corey Rosen Schwartz, illustrated by Dan Santin, and read today by Vicki Doe, ABCI Explainer, Class of 2021. This is a new take on an old favorite, Little Red Riding Hood. Throughout her time with the wolf, Red called attention to the animal parts that are different from her granny. Have you ever wondered why the same part of an animal, like the ear, is different from one animal to the next? Stay tuned after the story for an activity exploring animal ears. Ninja Red Riding Hood by Corey Rosen Schwartz, illustrated by Dan Santat, read by Vicki Doe. Once upon a ninja fell time, a wolf couldn't catch any prey. He kept getting licked by the dinner he picked and was growing more ticked by the day. His belly was aching for bacon. I'm wasting away, he complained. To huff and to puff was no longer enough, so he snuck into school to be trained. He practiced his katas for hours and mastered the whirlwind and wheel. He jackknifed and flipped and at last felt equipped to once again catch a good meal. Drooling with anticipation, he set off in search of some meat. While deep in the wood, he met Riding Hood, I'm bringing my grandma a treat. The wolf licked his chops when he saw her and hastily thought up a plan. There are blossoms that way you can pick a bouquet to give to your little old gran. Then the wolf took a shortcut to grandma's, where he thought that he'd find her in bed. But granny was gone, so he put her robe on and eagerly waited for Red. Soon after, he heard someone knocking. He called out, my dear, come on in. Oh, don't you look good in your lovely red hood, but a shame that you've gotten so thin. Little Red took a look at her granny and said, what on earth did you do? I could swear that your eyes have completely changed size. Hey, Gran, are you sure that it's you? Of course it is me, my sweet darling. The better to see you, my dear. And your ears are so long, something really seems wrong. Oh, my girl, all the better to hear. And those biceps, my gosh, they look massive. And your triceps and delts are immense. The better for hugging her, Grandma said, shrugging. Dear Red, that's just plain common sense. And those teeth, they look so much sharper. Why, yes, all the better to chew. He jumped out of bed to gobble up Red, but... She'd gone to ninja school, too. She'd grappled and sideswiped and twisted and escaped from his clutches unscratched. She attempted a lock, but he managed to block. They appeared evenly matched. Just then, they both heard someone chopping. A woodsman, Red thought, but instead, it was her gran and her gi. She'd just come from Tai Chi. Don't you dare harm a hair on her head. The wolf took a swing at that instant. But Red deftly dodged the attack. She got a good grip, threw him over her hip, and the wolf wound up flat on his back. I'll skedaddle, the wolf said in anguish as he struggled back up on his feet. Just a second, you beast, you will not be released till you promise to give up red meat. Though his tummy still rumbled with hunger, the wolf faced his rival and vowed, Ninja Red, you have won. My meat days are done. Oh, Red Chan said, Grant, I'm so proud. Then Grant and the wolf bowed politely, and Grant gave him half her peach pie. The wolf was a mess. He had way too much stress. I guess I'll give yoga a try. He enrolled at the Downward Dog Center, where his tension began to decrease. He studied with yogis, said no to meet hoagies, and felt, at last, truly at peace. Today's activity is adapted from the Exploratorium's Science Snack Collection, and it's called Designer Ears. Have you ever noticed the difference in ear shapes of animals? Did you ever wonder why they are different? The first thing we are going to do today is explore different shapes and how they affect our hearing. I want you to collect a variety of objects that mimic animal ear shapes. Paper, cardboard, plastic containers, cups. Look up pictures of animals to get an idea of what shapes to use. So I have a bowl and a plate that I cut the bottom out of. I have a toilet paper tube, two sizes of cups also with the bottom off, water bottle, and a foil container. I also have some paper. 
Place the container around your ear. Be sure not to cover up your ear. You don't want to block the sound. So try each shape. Put it up to your ear so your ear is open and listen. Have some music playing in the background so then you can compare what each one sounds like. Try each one. Through, try the cups, try the foil container. Which shape collects and amplifies the sound the best? Describe what you notice to a family member or record your observation on a piece of paper. Pause the video here and conduct your investigation. Welcome back. Did you notice that the larger ears help you hear better? Here's the science behind ear shape. The outer ear of most animals acts like a funnel, collecting and directing the sound into the inner ear from it. So it comes in, goes into your ear, and into your brain. The brain then takes that information and helps us understand what is in the world around us. Animals with large ears generally hear better than animals with smaller ears that might rely on a different sense, like sight. Big ears can also help avoid predators, locate prey, and find members of their family. Now that you've explored the sound and learned more about the different ear shapes, I want you to design and construct a new set of ears that will help you hear better. Do you want long tube-shaped ears like a horse? or small pointy ears like a cat? Can you combine shapes into something new and unique? What can you do to help the ears stay on your head? Sketch out your design before you create your ears. Be sure to take pictures along the way and send them to your teacher to share your designs. I can't wait to see what you come up with. Keep checking back for more videos over the next couple of weeks. Until I see you again, Stay curious.